Today's reading is brought to you by Nike, the Greek goddess of ambition and purveyor of excellent golden accessories and makeup. <laughs> Story time. I need to tell you something. Something bizarre happened to me yesterday on the street. I was just waiting to cross the road and all of a sudden a young woman came up to me to ask me for directions. She was looking for a hospital nearby and as I was trying to help her, I hear this man meowing next to me. And I turned to look and it was a man that had bloodshot red eyes and his skin was a combination of purple and gray in spite of the fact that he actually was dressed quite well, for a moment I had this feeling that I met a succubus. It was so strange because this man meowed and then lunged to attack the woman sitting next to me. So in a strange way, I'm kind of grateful that I was there because my body was in between her and him. And I took her by my side and we circled around this man, avoiding the attack and crossed the road. It was such a bizarre thing. He followed us for a little while, meowing again and trying to kind of push his body onto us. Uh, I mean, New Moon in Scorpio is actually taking place on my Pluto, some intensity and bizarre extreme events, and it's taking place in my first house, the body. So literally, I was playing out the energies in my astrological chart through this encounter with this unhealed and strange man. The woman was okay, I was okay, we laughed and shrugged it off and eventually she went on her way to find the hospital and I went on my daily walk. But yeah, take care out there guys and I really hope that man didn't hurt anybody else. Anyway, some food for thought, let's get to your reading! Hey crew, welcome back to the Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi, your local light worker. I'm a tarot reader and an astrologer, and I'm so grateful that you are here with me today. Today we are celebrating the new moon in Scorpio, and this moon is powerful and packing a punch because it is trined by Neptune in Pisces, squared by Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius, and also opposed by Uranus in Taurus. Yep, a lot of random spontaneous events might happen like the ones that I mentioned in the intro to this video so please take really good care of yourselves out there and also remember that you don't need that much protection because you are already divinely blessed and protected and your belief and your faith and your inner fire will help you understand how you need to act in any problematic situation trust your intuition have a strong faith within yourself and act from a place of empowerment and you will not go wrong in life. So today in this reading, because you guys are so amazing um, and you already subscribed a lot in between the time that I took to create the previous pick a card reading and this one, this one is going to be a giveaway as well. So it's not only going to be a celebratory messages of love and light for the moon in Scorpio and happy Diwali as well, the festival of lights for those of you that celebrate it, but it's also going to be a giveaway. I'm, go I'm giving away Blah. <laughs> I'm excited and I trip over my words. This happens all the time. So let me rein it back. I'm giving away one free general reading on a topic of your choice to whoever is quick enough to let me know what is the most luminous thing they did in their life. Comment down below, like this video, subscribe, and then you are just subscribing to my competition, okay? You stand a chance to win a free general tarot reading with me. Winners will be announced 48 hours from the moment that I post this video up. Make sure to follow me on Instagram or check my community tab to find out if you are the winner. I wish you good luck, guys, okay? So make sure to subscribe, don't forget. Now, this is going to be an in-depth reading. I have a halluva of oracle cards. So cozy up, get a nice cold or warm beverage, and please really take in this reading. I am creating this with the intention of shedding as much love, light, and inspiring ideas to guide you during this rather hectic times, I would say. 
So you have a choice here today between three different tarot decks, if you feel more drawn to the tarot decks, or three objects. Two of these objects I actually found on my daily walks in the park nearby my home. So that was really strange and beautiful. So we have here for group one, the white Newman tarot, or there is this golden tree of life medallion. For group two, this is one of my favorite medallions. It is a clear quartz that I like to use to cleanse energy. Or you have the Etherical Visions Tarot, the German version that I have. And we also have here the Illuminated Tarot for group three or this Opalite tip. It looks as if it was the tip of a wand that was broken, but look how scintillating it is. Gorgeous, right? So it's opalite, it's not opal guys, and it's not moonstone, okay? Opalite is actually an artificially created crystal, um, but nonetheless it is breathtakingly gorgeous. Okay, so take a moment now to figure out which of these groups pulls you in the most, okay? And if you've made your choice, then I am so excited about reading your messages at your group. I'm sending you so much love. Take care. Bye. Hey group one. Hey my darlings. I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome to your reading. This is on the topic of messages of love and light. Happy new moon in Scorpio. Happy Diwali if you celebrate this, the festival of lights. This is for those of you that were drawn to the golden tree of life medallion or to the white Newman tarot. Okay, I have a lot of oracle cards for you here. We're going to do this in depth style. So cozy up and prepare to listen. And as I am shuffling from the White Newman Tarot, please enter the giveaway that I have prepared for you. Like this video, subscribe, and comment down below to let me know what is the most luminous thing you have done in your life. It can be anything from a small act of kindness to maybe something bigger, right? I'm only going to pull two cards for you from the tarot because we've got a lot of things to get through, as I said. So let's see. Here are your cards. We have here the Seven of Swords, the Eight of Wands. There is a wounding here regarding quick, quick verbal communication that hurt. Let's see how much light can we bring into this. So your angel is Hahaya or the Page of Swords and this angel is the angel of refuge, governs dreams and reveals mysteries hidden from mortals. Okay, so Hahaya is here to take you in its arms and give you refuge. Heron, we have here, let go of convention and follow your own unique path. So the wounding, the criticism, the strong verbal, maybe in some cases abuse that was lunged at you could have come from people that did not accept your true self. This could be in relation to you wanting to study a different path or work a different profession than the one your parents or the environment in which you grew up and wanted you to pursue. This could be related to your gender or sexuality. You wanted to couple up with people potentially of your same sex and you were discriminated against. This could be on matters regarding race and your skin color. You could have suffered these wounds regarding how you come across in the world and how your body ends up defining you in a very unjust way. So I see here very clearly that some of you might be at the end of your rope and I urge you my loves to please reconsider. Okay, we need you. This is a really beautiful time of growth and development no matter how difficult Difficult, it might end up looking on the outside as everything is shifting towards a new era. We have here your affirmation of light. Happiness is my birthright. Yes, you deserve to be happy. You will be happy. You can attain it. It is possible to be happy in this lifetime. 
A lot of you could have a Saturn and Sagittarius. You've always felt blocked. You felt like your growth was always stifled. You felt like life wasn't fun. It was heavy. And uh, you had to put up with a lot of heaviness from the people in your environment. Maybe there were constant limitations around you. Some of you might have a North Node in Capricorn as well. So it's kind of like you keep manifesting obstacles and limits because this is what your destiny has placed you here in this incarnation to experience but you will experience deep moments of pleasure and happiness throughout your lifetime and you will create a path that is more luminous than what you have experienced previously and this can also be what you have experienced in a previous lifetime at the hands of people that were constantly lying to you or gaslighting you okay so let's see enlightenment yes this is why you have been put on this difficult road many of you that chose this group could be a life path seven or nine you don't have an easy destiny but you will succeed nonetheless you are this kind of person that succeeds by overcoming difficult things things that other people don't have the inner strength and fortitude to overcome them so God is giving you all these limitations and obstacles because you have what it takes to actually overcome them and succeed. Beautiful. It's like you're, you're sailing into this golden um, sunset. It's like Orion's gate has opened up in the sky. Wow. It's just, I feel that you're in spite of the difficulties within which you were born and raised, I feel like you will open up a lot of doors for many people. Maybe by speaking up about the things that have happened. Maybe by breaking family curses and choosing to follow a different path than the one of your ancestors. This can also be about consciously parenting, consciously working, not working to exhaust yourself, not working in the same profession that many ancestors have done for many many years but you're taking a step back you're observing and you're saying I choose differently I choose differently for myself and for the blood lineage that I will create if you choose to have children or if you want to create your own family you want to be conscious and aware of how different you are going to be in relation to your children how different of a worker you're going to be how uh, different of a lover you're going to be Many of you were brought up in highly traditional religious families or in families that want you to marry people that they have chosen. And it is your task in this lifetime to stand up to yourself and to say, I want to marry for love or I don't want to marry. I just want to have a free open relationship, maybe just a civil partnership or just to experiment and, you know, have relationships with different people because I don't think that, you know, monogamy is the way to go forward. Okay, so some of you could be polyamorous. I have here as well the thing that you can be grateful for at the moment in your life so we have here new beginnings yes thank you angels for opening up the doors to change I am ready you are ready okay I am ready now if you want to make this affirmation even stronger so you are ready you see this angel of light walking through this portal right a lot of you that have chosen this group are currently undergoing your Saturn return. It could be your first, it could be your second. A lot of you are undergoing a dark night of the soul as well. But look, you're walking through this gate. The threshold is here. You're creating these openings and you're grabbing happiness. You're no longer putting up with things just because you have to do them. Just because somebody said that this is how you should live your life, they carved out a nice little box for you to enter and you're within this box and you're unhappy and you feel trapped and you feel suffocated and you don't understand why you might be having these strange symptoms, right? And your mind is not aligned with your heart. Well, it's because they're pulling in two different directions. Some of you could be a dual sign as well. So you could be a Gemini, you could be a Pisces, you could be a Libra if we think of the Libra as having those two balanced sides, right? So there is something here about you needing to follow your own truth in spite of the repercussions that this might have in your social environment. Um, there is something here about risking, 
risking a dissolution of your previous connections in order to allow other people to come in people that will generally be able to help you fulfill your goals in this lifetime so for example if you were brought up in a very traditional family i think that this message for uh, some of you out there will resonate very strongly maybe you were brought up in a traditional um you know mother father heterosexual background highly religious you feel a sense of shame regarding your attachment to same sex people right but you might want to create your own family with a member of the same sex and you might want to adopt children right there's nothing wrong with that but it's like you need to overcome this feeling of shame and of guilt which might have kept you in the dark for a very long time and might have urged you to separate your bodily needs from your reason so it's whenever i see this sword to the head this is almost as if using your throat chakra to um, cover up who you are misrepresent yourself in speech you wanted one thing you felt one thing but you said something completely different this is a typical mercury square moon um, aspect playing out in a person's chart i know that very intimately i have that as well and it's taken me years to work through it and to generally say what i mean you know but you can do it with dedication. You can align your emotions with your uh, verbal expression and you can even play around. So from time to time, you might say something, you catch yourself having said something that is not true to who you are. And then you can just say, wait a minute, wait, no, that's not what I mean. What I mean to say is this, right? So allow yourself the space to exercise, to experiment, to correct yourself as you are speaking. There's no one in this world that says that you need to say clear, definitive sentences and enunciate them in a limited time frame, okay? You can always play around with vocabularies, right? Vocabularies are always changing. We're always growing, adding new words, letting go of old words, you know, creating all sorts of interesting verbal expressions. I also feel that maybe you might have lived in the house with... Um, <laughs> what in slang we call a grammar Nazi, right? So maybe one of your parents was always correcting you, always interrupting you, always speaking over you and telling you, no, you shouldn't speak like this, you should say this, and this is the truth. Who are they to say that they are uh, the purveyors of absolute truth? That is so incredibly arrogant. And your parent might have actually functioned from this position of a very um, armored ego right so it wasn't their true self that was speaking it was an armored ego and by definition they might have unconsciously taught you how to function from an armored ego as well right an ego that just does not want to change it's so inflexible and it ultimately leads to all sorts of psychosomatic issues and problems but we're not going to get into that right now we are focused on you and how you can flexibly de-armor the ego and bring in as much light as possible Possible, right like in the Leonard Cohen song um, the cracks in our armor is where the light comes in is where your truth can be allowed to express itself because we live in a society where there are a million ways of living your life a million ways of creating yourself and many subjective subjective truths happening at the same time so see i'm already tripping because i feel that some of you are becoming already very conscious of how you are speaking yeah and you're already starting this analysis of hey wait was i actually really um correcting myself or was this parent correcting me and how can i change my speech you can you can detach it you can make it more flexible more fun communication can be fun it doesn't have to be aggressive it doesn't have to be like machine gun style and if there was or as i see it here if there is a wound related to fast aggressive communication and people being highly critical of you you can heal that and you can learn to speak with compassion and you can heal others as you are healing yourself through the words that you say yeah we also have here melchizedek higher learning yeah so we have you have learned from experience more inner study is now required to further progress 
So you could actually be engaged in a higher education course at the moment. You could be doing your master's, your bachelor studies, or your PhD. You could be very uh, focused on finding the right words, the right sentences that express myself very clearly um, in scientific research. Indeed, that is required. But at the same time, you do need to keep in mind that there are these two sides of yourself, right? Your intuitive, emotional self, uh, which you need to bring out more to the surface because I feel that group one needs to play more. They need to have more fun in life. This is the key to this overall message of love and light. You need to be more playful and to consciously make decisions. Today, I'm going to schedule in some time to uh, honor my inner child and do something fun just because, not because I need to achieve a goal, not because I need to speak in a perfect and clear um, enunciated way, but I'm just gonna take refuge, yeah, because we have here Hahaya, and it's funny because the name Hahaya, it's like ha ha ha, right? So it's encouraging you to take life less seriously, take it more lightly, have fun, even if you suffered in the past, you need to let go of that baggage. You're an adult now. Um, the majority of you that are watching this are adult individuals, I hope. <laughs> and um, you're just in that... I feel like you've been placed in this role of adult from too early on. Maybe you were pushed or forced by your parents to grow before you were ready. And now it's kind of like you need to... Um, schedule time in your daily busy schedule to actually have fun to enjoy to do something brain dead right to do something really silly um and even to actually get in contact with people that make you laugh that just uh, give you the sense of lightness yes because i already can feel that the energy is kind of going low yeah so let's let's pick you up and raise your energy again let's keep it going we have here Libyan gold tectite. You see, <laughs> gorgeous energy. So this is the stone and where to put the stone or actually this is a 28 million year old Saharan desert glass only found in the Sahara desert. This gem is yellow, but far from mellow. <laughs> see, so playful expressions. The navel gazing and brooding, binge watchers, anyone looking to hit the street with some extra swagger, and cancers. So these are the people that need this Libyan gold tectite, or it works better with Cancerian energy. And where to put it? Hold Libyan gold tectite, or this card, at your will center, just above the navel. So Manipura, right? The solar plexus chakra. And set some goals. Seriously, make a list. Then call on the fiery, beyond ancient energy of the stone to help you break through the burning desire to binge watch the day away. When to use it? When your get up and go has ghosted you. Mm. And the affirmation that you have is banish your blahs. Yeah. So you might be feeling like life isn't fun and you might be tempted to drift away. But here, again so you got the message of awakening and enlightenment you see all this gorgeous light and it's also pouring in through the window i'm also feeling incredibly hot as i'm doing your reading um there is this massive solar energy coming through so yes the solar plexus you could be suffering from low self-esteem um a hidden wound to your confidence not feeling like you can be proud and bold and fun i feel that cancer energy would benefit from this libyan gold tectite but also you have a wound related to your leo leo energy right your capacity to shine to be proud to feel bold to stand your ground with um determination you know um to be able to say no to people you know left and right you don't need those options you know you've got other things life is fun life is to be enjoyed life is pleasurable okay i feel that these should be your morning affirmations we have here as well <laughs> wow dance with life and the sentence is do something to change your energy yeah so if you've been feeling blah you need to get a plan in motion okay uh, maybe buy some leggings and a pair of sport shoes and sign up to the gym or maybe um, go to the other side of your city or of your town of the area in which you live and explore something new. Maybe you've been putting off meeting that old friend. 
call them, contact them. There is something here that you can do to have fun. Go bowling, go to the cinema, go ice skating, right? Go to the beach. Depending on where you live, you need to do something fun and introduce more fun activities in your life. And if they are not being granted to you through invitations by other people, you can create them yourself, okay? Take yourself out on a date, have something fun on your own, and you'll see how people will be attracted to that sense of confidence, independence, and, you know, humor. We also have here, bliss is worth creating from. It's interesting because I was looking at this card suspiciously because we have here from that is cut out for, and again from. What was I saying earlier about being highly specific about how you express yourself? I think you're this kind of individual that painstakingly uh, takes the time to autocorrect um, all of the small spelling mistakes in your email or in your text messages. You know, you want to put forward a very clear, rational, correct, almost like perfect in speech image. And I think this is related to this wound, right, in the past where you've got this energy that was um, very brutal and overpowering, in, especially in terms of how they spoke to you. Um, it's almost like um, mental domination. That's kind of what I'm getting. So, and it was coming from your, your parents or your pers that person's uh, low self-esteem and their own fear of being stupid or being seen as stupid. So what did they do? They compensated by trying to make you feel stupid and put themselves on a high keel, making themselves look big and intelligent and like they know everything. But who wants to be next to a know-it-all? I'm pretty sure that this person doesn't have many friends, right? So detach yourself from that energy and heal this verbal wound. You don't have to be perfect. Perfect. You don't have to get everything ultra right and sometimes if you make mistakes, that's okay because I can feel that there might be some sort of like nervous system activation, like you get this fright or this wave of shame over you if you made a tiny mistake, you know, that is okay. You're human. You're allowed to make mistakes. We love you anyway, yeah? So bliss is worth creating from, and I think here the meaning of this card is from within, yeah? And with a heart that is radiant, this is like, it's like you've got this inner reservoir of ideas, uh, of creativity that you've been stifling. And I feel that spirit is guiding me to let you know that Allow yourself to bring out more of yourself into the world. You already have all the solutions, the ideas, ways in which you can make your life more playful, better, more exciting, more luminous. You just have to bring them out. You know, you just have to do this daily work of let's write them down. Let's talk about them. Let's put them into action somehow, right? Everything is within you. You just have to bring it out, yeah? Even when you're doing research, even when you're writing a book, you bring everything out. You already know everything. It's within you. Yeah, we have here Sahasrara. This is the crown chakra energy. So you could have a highly active crown chakra. But look, with the bliss from within and with the crown chakra card, it's kind of like you need to pour down this energy that is highly active here. Pour it down into the other chakras until it reaches the heart and then to the solar plexus because you are highly intelligent but you lack the confidence to actually put this intelligence for everyone to see mostly because i think you are afraid that you will not become like this parent or authority figure that corrected you very strongly this could even be a teacher you know or somebody that had some sort of authority over you a religious leader mm -hmm. and then we also have here Spirit Owl of 852 Hertz. And for this one, I'm actually going to read you the deeper message. Recalibration to a higher order of divine purpose is in progress. It is not always a smooth ride, but it is safe to be fearless as you gently hold space for new ways of thinking, living, and seeing to emerge. You are encouraged to let go of opinions and belief systems that cannot support you in higher frequency states. You shall soon recognize a truth that cuts through confusion and frees you to proceed with love, 
peace and higher understanding. So the spirit owl is the wisdom bearer, the one who perceives the intended meaning underlying words and the truth behind what is actually spoken so i'm getting a sense that my love you grew up in an environment where you were gaslighted things were always being kept away from you but you were made to feel like you were the one holding secrets like there was something wrong with you when in reality there wasn't your intuition was spot on you were picking up on the fact that somebody was lying or keeping things away from you and this is your healing moment i feel like at the moment the new moon in scorpio the diwali energy is blessing you with the truth you will find out just the extent of these lies you will uncover truths and even though sometimes they might be uncomfortable to hear the truth ultimately sets us free like in that cliche but it is a cliche because it was repeated over and over and over again throughout time since it resonates so much with a lot of people's realities and it's closest to a universal truth you will uncover a lot of information you don't even need to seek it out as you are going about your day having fun creating working on your projects relating to other people loving yourself you will find out the missing bits of the information that can help you have a more coherent sense of self that can replenish that confidence that was unfortunately taken away from you through years of um, kind of aggressive communication. You're healing that, my love. This is your awakening moment. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Look at all the light that is pouring into your life at the moment. You are so blessed. It was a pleasure for me to create this reading for you. I really hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you found it inspiring. You have so many beautiful energies. Keep in mind that the Melchizedek, the Spirit Owl, and Hahaya are wonderful spirit guides that you can pray to or keep by your side in this period. From my part, from my heart to yours, I'm sending you so much light. Hey group three, hello my loves. I'm so happy to have you here with me today for a reading of messages of light and love. Happy new moon in Scorpio, happy Diwali. Let's get into it. This is for those of you that were drawn to this clear quartz medallion. I have here as well the Etheric Visions Tarot, the German version. And as I am shuffling these cards, I would like you to please subscribe like this video and leave a comment down below to enter my giveaway for a chance to win one free general reading with me comment below and let me know what is the most luminous thing you have done in your life it can be anything from a small act of kindness to something more inspiring and larger in scale okay so let me know and in the reading today i do need to let you know that it is an in-depth tarot reading and i have a lot of tarot and oracle cards for you today so cozy up okay and prepare to listen because lots of things are coming through i'm only going to pull two tarot cards from the etheric visions tarot to not make it too long but wow right off the bat craft oh i had so much light in my room there we go craft which is strength yeah leo energy wow i think it's because i've opened the space for messages of light to come through i'm getting all of this light from outside from the sun it's a really bright beautiful clear skyed autumn day where i'm filming this but also leo energy is solar energy and group one as well had this massive solar plexus activation in their reading as well so i think this is you taming the beast this can be the beast that we have within, our lower urges, our desire for conflict, our desire for drama, our desire for self-sabotaging. But I think as well that this is about you overcoming a difficult situation in your life with somebody that felt like they they might have been quite animalistic in how they treated you. Uh, they might have functioned from a very low place. Um, they might have... Um, selfishly used you or wanted to selfishly use you so you're overcoming your own lower urges and you're detaching from a person that was um 
very difficult to handle, very difficult to deal with. You're coming into your power. You're understanding that you are the person that can create whatever it is that you want in your life. And you have always a choice between whether you should go for a low kind of energy and act out of your light or whether you should stand in your power and in your light and go for something higher up to overcome difficult circumstances, to be patient, to let go, to give things away with compassion, to not retaliate, to place yourself in the observer role, to extract wisdom from difficult circumstances and to seek help when you need it rather than to handle everything on your own from a place of vengefulness or aggression, yeah? Or from an unhealed, unconscious place. So strength, Leo energy. Some of you could have a lot of placements in Leo. Um, you could have a very packed um, eighth house as well. You could have your moon in the eighth house or the sun there. And I cracked my, yeah, accidentally cracked my finger. So there could be some tension that you're letting go of. You know, people that crack their fingers um, usually have a lot of tension in their body. And just that simple act of doing that, um, of actually playing with their tendons, although it's not healthy in the long run, detensifies their body. So maybe you, you were keeping a lot of tension in your body. And I feel like in this period, you're letting it go. The Eight of Swords, you're no longer part of this um, victim kind of attitude. You decided to let it go. You're, you're waking up to everything that is happening around you. Maybe in the past, you decided to pull a blind eye to whatever it was that was happening around you. Maybe this was because you had to stay in a relationship due to financial concerns, but now it's like, I'm choosing to follow my heart. Leo energy is about heart and you're taking the blindfold off and you're facing reality for what it really is, not for what you want it to be or for what you thought it was, but you're genuinely having a good hard look at the people around you, the circumstances in your life, and you're choosing to think differently. You're choosing to speak differently. And this is what's giving you your power back. It's almost as if you were like in a fairy tale under a spell and you're waking up from that spell and you're understanding that whoa this is not who i thought this person was this is not the kind of life i actually signed up for how did i reach this point and now you're gonna retrace your steps and you're gonna make empowered decisions decisions where you are going to be at the center i want to do this now I am going to do something that makes me happy, not everyone else happy, enough with the self-sacrifice, enough with this mm, learned helplessness behavior. You are not helpless. You are not a victim. You're a powerful creator. And finally, you're admitting this to yourself. And you're, I think a lot of you are actually understanding or trying to play around with this idea of what does it actually mean to stand in your power? Well, basically, it just means not allowing other people to influence you, not picking up on other people's gossip or ideas or opinions, and then taking that as, yeah, I should definitely do as, you know, this person told me. That's a recipe for a disaster. You can definitely ask other people for opinions. You can, you know, do a little bit of brainstorming if you find yourself a little bit stuck, but then it's up to you to understand whether the advice that you received fits with what you feel is right for you yeah we have here as well your angel the king of wands and this is daniel god the merciful judge and his qualities are eloquence and gives answers to those in doubt yeah so if you're doubting if you're worrying if you're wondering should i take this leap of faith forward will i have the power will i be protected yes 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 okay so you're also going to have success in a legal procedure it might not be extravagant success but you will be well compensated or truth the truth is going to come up to the surface you're no longer lying to yourself you're no longer lying to the people around you you might have done so to protect yourself but now daniel is here to protect you so you don't need that extra layer of protection and you're breaking through the illusion mm. King of Wands, Aries Leo Sagittarius, you're embodying this deeply masculine energy of 
I can do it. I have the power. I have the confidence. I can carve my own path and I do not need to depend on other people to do so. If I have other people in my life, it's because I chose them. It's because I want them. It's because they make my life feel better. It, they help my life grow rather than block me, stop me, karmically tie me down and impose all sorts of restrictions on me that are just keeping me almost like in a coffin-like environment. We have here the white swan, yeah? So it says here, the power of divine grace is within you. Mm. Truly, so part of this coming into your power and what does it mean to stand in your power is the fact that you're starting to be more trusting of people, of circumstances just working out, of reaching out for help, of um, starting to explore. Maybe I need to move someplace better. Maybe I need to travel, not be so stuck in everything that I got accustomed to. Because I think in certain cases, this being accustomed to, you thought it was providing you with safety and stability, but it's actually keeping you from growing. It's keeping you in a childlike state of uh, perceived vulnerability we have here your affirmation so it says here I surrender to a power greater than me <laughs> paradoxically you are finding out how powerful you are by cooperating with the divine by praying by trusting by asking the divine to give you signs and synchronicities by genuinely asking a question going to sleep and then allowing your unconscious mind to work with the creator's energy and you're waking up in the morning and it's like I know, I know what I have to do now, yeah? So you're gonna sleep on things. You're gonna allow the advice and um, the clarification that you need in the spirit to remove the doubt away. And you're gonna be doing this not by going to the same kind of channels that you used to in the past. I'm gonna ask my mom, I'm gonna ask my dad, I'm gonna ask my high school friends. You're gonna be like, I'm gonna trust myself. I'm gonna ask an unseen force that I'm starting to believe in more and more each day and you're seeing these answers in your dreams <laughs> it's, it's very strange a lot of you might be thinking but isn't this kind of like me losing my mind no it's about you understanding that you also have other parts within you that can help you reach decisions and conclusions it's what in the creative process is called placing your mind in a moratorium and you allow things to settle in from the conscious mind into the unconscious mind so we have here relaxation yeah and you're doing this it's like as you relax as you're doing something fun something that replenishes you something that just takes your mind away from work from your duties and everyday responsibilities ideas come to you when you get into that flow of relaxation when you do something creative something fun when you just you know place yourself in a hammock metaphorically speaking and allow it to kind of lull you to sleep now, what is the thing that you can be grateful for? And we have here, awesome. He looks like a superhero from uh, like a Power Ranger <laughs> cartoon. We have here Archangel Hamuel, open your heart. And the affirmation is, thank you Hamuel for removing the barriers around my heart. So if you came here for a message of love, I'm here to tell you that Archangel Hamuel is helping you, actively helping you remove obstacles from you encountering your soulmate. Archangel Hamuel blesses soulmates. It is the energy that you should pray to and work with if you want to come together in union with a soulmate, okay? Somebody that is like you, understands you, gets you, feels like they are part of your soul family. Somebody that feels instantly familiar. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah, so you are protected by the white divine light of Archangel Hamuel and he's here to let you know that he's doing his best behind the scenes to remove obstacles, yeah? And the path towards your happiness. Wow! <laughs> we have Kuan Yin, care and compassion, lotus energy, enlightenment, all this pink and purple, spiritual, romantic healing and awakening. Choose to be loved. Do what is right for everyone involved. Offer a helping hand. 
in this period, in order for you to manifest things in your own life, please give help to other people. It's a bit of a weird process. So as I said, instead of asking for advice from the usual people that you would talk to, in this period, you're going within and you're looking at your own unconscious um, energy, uh, reservoir of ideas to seek answers. You're looking at spirit, at the creator, at this beautiful love energy that exists and binds and connects us all for wisdom. And also, I'm getting a sense here that you are looking to, yeah, see for a moment my mind went blank when I said the energy of the creator. You're still coming to terms with it. You're still grappling with this. Yeah, it's still something that is being integrated. You trusting something that you cannot see doesn't make sense. Yeah, and it's the same with um, love. Instead of building a connection with your partner, um, through the normal avenues, dating, you know, and being physically close to each other, you build it by proxy. And what I mean by that is you give money, time, attention, resources to people who are in need through volunteering, through small acts of kindness in your community, by uh, just giving somebody a compliment, you know, making their day, giving them free stuff, right? Um, by doing these things, all this beautiful energy is used by Archangel Hamuel to bring you closer to your soulmate. Yeah? So no act of kindness is ever unlooked or unseen. Your generosity, your generosity, generosity <laughs> is never squandered. Okay, so please don't be, please don't give things or your energy or your time with a feeling of um worry or fear will this come back to me it will okay just give generously just give because you enjoy the act of giving and you see how beautifully you're magnetized more love in your life we also have here your crystal is the smoky quartz so what is it ranging from almost clear to nearly black smoky quartz pairs the clarity inducing vibes of clear stones with the protective do not cross over this line vibes of black ones who needs it? Glass have empty types, space cadets, okay? So if you're too much in your mind, if you're too pessimistic, this is the crystal for you. Where to put it? On a chain around your neck or hidden in your pocket whenever you're certain to find difficult people in your path, family dinner tables, conference rooms, subway cars, yeah? And when to use it? When you fall prey to emotional vampires, oh yeah. When you're just too spacey and you can't even. <laughs> When you're embarking on a spiritual journey or a journey to pick up your dry cleaning, yeah, as I mentioned in the introduction, you know, random things like this can happen to us on the streets, right, in public places. Extra points if you're thinking, what's the difference, right? So working through these ingrained negative, um, I just don't look forward to anything anymore. Your affirmation is arm your spiritual warrior. Don't give up, don't give in, yeah? Keep loving, keep being kind, keep being awesome. We are tested collectively at the moment by Saturn's constricting, limiting, separatist energy of the collective in Aquarius. But keep doing you, keep being awesome. And I feel like the light is already kind of eating half of my face <laughs> or sculpting it, however you want to see it. So I'm just going to take a step back. It might help as well for you to emotionally detach for cert from certain situations that have been making your mind spin like a hamster wheel. Let's see. Manifestation. A lot of you have lost your desire or power to manifest. Guys, personal story, I have to tell you that I've been struggling as well to manifest this year. And in spite of the fact that I had a routine, I had the confidence, I was doing all the alignment tasks that were necessary, it's difficult to manifest a lot of our desires this year because karmically the south node of the moon is transiting Sagittarius and when the energy is leaked out of Sagittarius energy, it's like we are karmically blocked from growth, from expressing our freedom, from being philosophical, optimistic, and big picture people, from feeling a strong connection to the divine, the energy is funneled into the opposite sign of Sagittarius, which is Gemini. And Gemini is about the little mind, right? It's about little things, focusing on what's in front of you, uh, being pragmatic, being rational. Um, it's this energy of 
I don't believe it until I see it, right? I don't believe in something I cannot touch and see. That's crazy, right? Uh, what's in it for me, right? This is the kind of energy. Um, it can be also very versatile and innovative and technologically savvy and quick. Those are the higher minded energies. But collectively, I'm noticing like a turn towards pessimism, yeah? Don't worry. It's just a cycle. And that's why astrology is so beautiful because it tells us that this transit has a deadline and this is what we can learn from. This is how we can go on the deep end of this transit and make a mess of it. Or this is how we can integrate the, the wise lesson and transcend that thread, grow from this. So from January 2022, you're going to start believing more in this manifestation ability as Sagittarius energy will be released from this karma that is draining them, vacuuming them of life force. And this applies for those of you out there that have a Sagittarius stellium, um, that are Sagittarius suns, Sagittarius ascendants, or Sagittarius moons especially. Wow, okay, so we have here the karma of Kutuhala. This is number 43, and I'm going to read you the in-depth message for this card. Your sacred soul passion is powerful enough to shift the state of your inner reality and your outer experience. So commit to what truly ignites your heart and do not be dissuaded by anything or anyone. If you are seeking to make a commitment, do so when it truly connects you to your heart. Follow your genuine, meaningful bliss. Know that no matter what appears to be, you shall prevail, you shall rise. So Kutuhala is a Sanskrit term that translates as that which excites wonder. And I'm pretty sure I did not pronounce it correctly. I do apologize for those of you who are uh, well versed in Sanskrit. Even if it doesn't seem like it will lead you anywhere practical, follow your bliss can allow for something beautiful and deeply fulfilling to take place in your life. So keep believing in spite of all the odds, exactly when your manifestation capacity is tested, when your belief in God is tested, that's when you need it the most. That's when you need to amp up, stoke that inner fire, right? We had it here, arm your spiritual warrior with confidence and determination and proceed to still believe, okay? It's a test, it's a test. Like in the song, right? By the Chemical Brothers. Maybe you need to listen to it. My heart, my soul are free. That's what they keep repeating in that song. Um, I also feel that if you're not able to manifest something, it could be that you're trying to manifest this from your mind only, so not your heart, because this card has so much energy of coming back into your heart in order to rise above your current circumstances. So... If you're not manifesting something that truly speaks to you, that truly comes from a place of pure emotion, it comes from an ego ambition or ego desire, then spirit is not going to help you create that because it will just be creating um, a sort of dark energy. It will be something that will feed your ego and make you kind of make poor choices or poor decisions. So if you're trying to manifest a hot person that looks incredibly good and it's like... Um, <laughs> only physically good looking you're not thinking about how that relationship will be like with that person if you're trying to manifest just pure sex with no feelings it might be difficult to actually bring that into being although from my experience i need to tell you it's easier to manifest sex and random hookups than um, manifesting a soulmate because that requires more time and it requires more elements to come together so i think that even if you were to manifest a random hookup or a sex connection be careful about romanticizing or idealizing that connection because you should just take it for what it is that specific contained experience in itself just physical pleasure yeah we also have here ajna the third eye i see that the chakras are well represented group one had uh, sahasrara the crown chakra and ajna is about the third eye right it's about unblocking it i feel like yours could be a little bit clogged um mine was a couple of days ago um and i feel that you would benefit from meditating from just um maybe listening to some sound clearing some sound meditations let's do it right now good you feel it's a bit lighter yeah listening to music in a really beautiful place is really going to help you at the moment okay being relaxed listening to music 
and trying to see your experiences from within. So close your eyes and go within rather than see everything at face value. Try to read people's energies. Try to understand what your heart is saying, not just um, what your eyes are telling you. Yeah? This is moving beyond the material. I feel that this is the resounding message at the moment. In order for you to manifest, in order for you to use your power for good, move beyond the material. We also have here, mm -hmm, Lemuria, creating heaven on earth. It's happening. <laughs> I'm kind of having a positioning issue with this light at the moment. Look at this. Gorgeous greens, soft blues, soft pinks, clear water, steady rocks, foliage. It's heaven on earth, right? Everything you need. Um, clear skies, great weather, a lot of fresh, clean air and fresh water. What more <laughs> could we need, right? To be able to function fully, to be able to instantly plug into the spiritual energy that exists here on earth. But, you know, if you live in a city, if you live in a really crowded metropolis, obviously you might not have access to these things. So you feel a little bit detached from yourself, your body, your connection to Gaia. You need to create spaces of this, maybe even if just through technology at the moment, if you can't be close to these elements. And if you're lucky enough to be able to drive or travel to or retreat someplace, do it without hesitation, okay? You are only going to benefit from it. So at the same time, I feel that creating heaven on earth is about you using your capacity to imagine a better world and start actively dreaming about it every day before you go to bed. Start creating this world, almost like you would create uh, your character or your landscape in a computer game. Start to think of the texture, the nuances. What would you like to have in your own little world? If you were the demiurg, right, the creator of the world, if you were a tiny god here on earth, what would you change about it? How would you create your surrounding reality? How would it look? How would it taste? How would it feel? What would you be able to do within it? Create it, visualize it, and you're going to come up with such inspired ideas that will help you in your relationships, in your work, and then also having something to look forward to. Final card I have here for you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Limitations inspire innovations. Do something out of the box, out of the ordinary. I did my makeup today with a splash of gold. It's not the traditional way in which I should do my makeup to look all queenly and awesome. I just felt the need to play a little bit, to, you know, break out of my normal everyday makeup mold because I found it boring, yeah? I wanted to make it fun for myself and hopefully you guys can enjoy it and feel inspired by you. I also themed it with the idea of this whole reading. I wanted to bring more light then, so I used gold and glitter. Think about how you can work with the limitations in your life, how you can meet a limitation, become aware of it, but then don't get depressed that there is this limitation there and throw a tantrum, right? That's a very disempowering attitude, but rather, aha, uh -huh, I have this limitation. How can I overcome it? How can I jump over it? How can I dig around it? How can I circle around it? What is the thing that can inspire me to overcome it? Yeah, get excited. Life is an adventure. Challenges are sexy. Start thinking of your life in these terms and watch as you grow by leaps and numbers. And I feel like I should end this reading here. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure that you enter my giveaway and I wish you so much light and so much good luck. Bye. Hey group three. Hey my loves. I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome to a reading of love and light. Happy Scorpio New Moon. Happy Diwali, the festival of lights. I'm blasting you with light in this reading. This is for those of you that were drawn to this opalite tip or to the illuminated tarot. This reading is also a giveaway. So as I'm shuffling from your cards and we've got a lot of cards for you guys here today. So cozy up. Okay. Be get, be get ready. <laughs> What? I was trying to rush through it, okay? Get ready, be prepared. That's what I wanted to say. Um, as I'm shuffling these cards, make sure that you enter the giveaway for a chance to win a free general tarot reading with me. Like this video, subscribe, and comment down below. What is the most luminous thing that you have ever done? It can be something quite small, like a simple act of kindness, or something bigger, something that can touch the collective, like writing a book, right? Or inventing something, bringing some positive contribution to society. Let me know down below, okay? 
I'm only going to be pulling two cards from the illuminated tarot because I don't want to make this reading too too long but it is an in-depth reading okay so let's find out what messages of love and light are meant for you today already we begin with death or the four of swords in this um, deck death rebirth scorpio energy the scorpio new moon will impact you the most i have a feeling that it's kind of like coming in this energy and it's drastically removing something from your life and pulling in something really big like almost a juggernaut of energy is coming into your your life i also feel that you potentially could have a lot of scorpio in your chart you could have a stellium in scorpio pluto in scorpio right my generation um or you could be a sun in scorpio moon in scorpio um you could be casting spells at the moment you could be on the receiving end of certain spells you can be breaking curses halloween i think is a really important celebration for you your birthday could have actually been around this season okay in which case happy birthday so there is something here about um wanting to dive forward into a completely new endeavor a new relationship a new job a new place of living i'm hearing that it's more about place of living um but you're a little bit afraid there is some fear here blocking you making you feel like should i risk myself should i not let's see the next card is the king of cups yes risk yourself so for some of you a small group of you this is about relocation but as i see these two cards one next to the other this is about jumping into a new connection yes do it <laughs> do it you're only gonna learn from it okay and the worst regrets that we have in this life are connected not to things that we have done but to things that we did not undertake yeah so things that we blocked ourselves from doing because you will always live with the doubt what if that might have worked out what if that thing would have opened a doorway into a completely new realm what if i was supposed to undergo that in order to change as a human being so rather go through it rather than hold yourself back you have a life and you're meant to live it not be on the back bench right trying to just participate in a passive way in it obviously there are moments when you should be in the observer role to try to be aware of what's happening around you but then don't keep yourself stuck in that role but participate once you have observed what you had to observe then make a decision a conscious decision and jump straight in jump straight into living you're departing with the loss and the land of the dead pluto or hades rules the underworld and i'm running out of breath wow some of you could be suffering from anxiety or fear or maybe there is a feeling that something was triggered within you at the moment so again lots of light my loves okay you've got this you've got this you're not weak you're not vulnerable you can do this you can do this okay and at the same time you need to understand that the sense of i'm out of breath is also related to fear but fear is also connected to excitement many times these feelings are indistinguishable when we have to undertake acts of bravery and when we have to transform ourselves in massive ways there's fear and there's excitement and as long as you are able to hold both of these complex feelings within rather than give yourself only to extreme excitement and risk doing something stupid or extreme fear and not doing anything because you're blocking yourself try to hold both within yourself i'm excited but i'm also a little bit cautious okay and um i'm taking a risk but it is a risk that was thought of beforehand right i kind of analyzed a little bit the situation and then i'm like okay let's do it let's see let the chips fall where they may so already this is a message about courage strength and <laughs> i feel like you guys compared to the other two groups you're too much in your heart energy it's kind of like you need to slow it down a little bit and apply the cool light of reason on whatever emotional encounter you might be having at the moment in your life for a lot of you this is about a soulmate union this is about um, clarification on a connection with somebody that you just love without reason it's the best kind of love unconditional love right um oh so beautiful okay so let's see your oracle cards right now wow spirit is so present because again my nose started itching <laughs> i'm sorry i'm trying to kind of keep it 
I don't want to rub my or pick my nose on camera, right? But it is happening. It is ticklish. <laughs> so your angel is Hahasia. This is so strange because group one got Hahaya and you have Hahasia. So again, I'm getting a sense that you definitely need to get more into the humorous side of life. And I'm kind of doing this globe of energy like I'm arming something up, you know, like a dynamo that is sparking up as it's um, as it's filling up with energy, right? Um, preparing to unleash it. You need to do something fun. You need to do something humorous. Don't take life so seriously. Have more fun with the choices you're making, you know? Make a decision and go with it and see what happens. You're creating a reality and it splinters off into other parallel realities. But that's the fun and beauty of life, right? Hahasia is God the impenetrable secret and it guards over universal medicine, elevation of the soul and the revelation of mysteries. I feel that what kept you in a state of fear and indecision or in a state of uh, I can't leave the space at the moment or I, I can't jump into this connection as wholeheartedly as I want is the fact that there might have been some secrets, some maybe some things that your detective mind and especially if you have Scorpio energy very strongly in your chart, you love to get to the bottom of things. Your intuition was really sparking up in this connection. And I feel that you haven't yet solved the puzzle, nine of wands. So you're on the defensive a little bit, right? You're like, I'm going to be a fortress until I figure out this mystery. I'm going to be a fortress. I'm not going to give anything out. I'm not going to have my words be used against me, but I will hold this person in high regard. So I see the King of Cups as a representation of you having a poker face as you're dealing with difficult life circumstances right now, a job change, a relocation. But for those of you that are in a connection, and this resonates more about the love situation, I see this as the energy of a Cancer, Pisces and Scorpio that you are in love with. They don't have to be these star signs in their sun. They could have this on their ascendant. It could be their chart ruler. So it could be a Cancer ascendant, Pisces ascendant, or Scorpio ascendant, or they could have the moon, Pluto and Neptune on their ascendant. Yeah, that's the energy I'm reading here. So God, the impenetrable secret. I also feel that in order for you to receive answers, you have to let go of keeping secrets yourself. I feel some of you are burdened by secrets and that's why your energy is being drained out of you because you have these secrets on your shoulders and you need to unburden your back in order to have somebody have your back. Yeah. So we have here as well the white owl. The wisdom and messages of the divine are within you. Very similar energy to group two who had the white swan, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Again, it's kind of like understanding that you can jump into things even without knowing them and they will be revealed as you go along. But make sure as well that you are not also the unseen one. Make sure that you're not keeping yourself in this kind of impenetrable way. Allow a person to get to know you as you also are curious about themselves and want to get to know them too. This can be done in a very simple way. When you're having a conversation with somebody, you might be very tempted to ask them a lot of questions, to find out a lot of things about them. But allow that person to ask you certain questions. And when they ask you these questions, don't hide behind your answers. Don't say something vague or evasive. Just tell them the truth. I know, it's a risk. It's a risk. But tell them the truth. Allow them to get to know you for who you are. And I'm having a feeling that this relationship will improve. Yeah? We also have, I choose to learn through love. Mm -hmm. So not through the defenses of the mind, not through um, calculations and plans, but learning as you go along, releasing a little bit the control. Yeah? Because another way in which you can read the death card is about control. And it is about death and rebirth because it is about how we go through these cycles in life when patterns keep emerging in our life, like we tend to fall in love with the same person because we are given again the opportunity to relinquish control, to make a different choice and experience a different outcome. So study your relational patterns. There are blessings coming in. Yeah, so this new moon energy is really, really activating more optimism in your life. I feel that you're not going to feel as heavy. A lot of, yeah, a lot of green, 
pink and yellow energy. I feel like you're also quite tired. Maybe a lot of you are finding it hard to listen to this message or you're listening to it as you're dozing off to sleep. There is an energy here that you do need to rest because we tend to fall into these paranoid fantasies when we are tired. It's like everything irks us because our nervous system is highly excitable. It is running on empty, right? Because we tired it out and we tend to take everything to heart. Everything becomes more magnified. Um, our body is overcharged, overloaded. It needs to be quiet. It needs to be calm. It needs to take a break. So sleep is definitely cleansing for you in this period. And it's also helping you understand that your mind, especially your unconscious mind, is incredibly powerful and that it can give you the solutions you are seeking. You don't even need to consult other people or you might consult other people from time to time, but then allow whatever ideas they tell you to um, kind of like process in your mind as you sleep. Okay, what can you be grateful for? And we have here unconditional love. This is the Divine Mother. Thank you, Divine Mother, for helping me to give and receive the love I deserve. Yes, God bless, amen. So may it be. Yeah, all of them. We're saying all of the manifestation words. So, unconditional love. You're letting go of control because you're allowing yourself to fall in love. You're becoming the master of your heart. As you might be falling in love with a water sign individual, a water dominant individual. Yeah, so Mother Mary is really helping you in this period. She knows the true meaning of letting go and surrendering to the Creator's will, right? She knows what it means to randomly be given a surprise pregnancy. <laughs> but she let go and she created it, she stuck to it, and it ended up healing the world. Yeah? So hold on, hold on. For some of you, this could be a decision whether you should keep a baby or um, abort it, you know? I feel that in most cases, it's obviously your decision, you know, and there is absolutely nothing negative attached to it. It's your body, it's your choice. I do feel that spirit is saying you might benefit from keeping it because I have a feeling that it will really bless your life with the love you might be seeking elsewhere. You might surprise yourself how much you'll fall in love with your child and how less of a burden you will consider it. Um, because this, I feel, is just the way in which society has scared you into running away from unconditional love, right? What can be more pure than the unconditional love and regard of a child, right? So that's just a small message for some of you that might be wondering at the moment. We have here Lady Portia, Divine Order. So the messages are, do what you feel is right. An important lesson is unfolding. Everything is being organized by something higher than you. You don't need to keep control of everything all the time. All the balls running up in the air and you trying to exert a lot of stress on your body and your mind and your soul to keep all the balls in perfect, you know, uh, symmetry all the time and in perfect movement. Things are already being taken care of, but you have to trust more, control less. I think this should be the Scorpionic mantra. Trust more, control less. Okay, even if there would be situations when other people hurt you, they just hurt your undeveloped ego. Your self is never bruised or broken. They hurt parts of you that have calcified against the world and are running the risk into turning you into an arrogant person that does not listen to anyone else. So that's why we meet these challengers, these nemesis around us, because they are meant to help us get back to a place where we ask for help, where we are humbled, where we are grateful. Yeah. So vulnerability and being placed in situations when you're supposed to be a bit more modest, to apologize, to be a little bit vulnerable, don't take it as I am weakened and I need to fight back. Take it as Thank God I'm being placed in this position because I was running amok with my hubris, okay? And that would have had the long-term consequence of removing life. And as I said this, I tremble because I almost slashed the um, glass. Yeah, removing life, destroying everybody around you that 
um, is meant to come into your life to love you, to bless you with wealth, with prosperity, with peace of mind. Does that make sense? I feel that for some of you, you really needed to hear this. Okay, moving on. We have here awakening. Yeah, okay, so energetic upgrades. A lot of you are awakening in the spirit, and I'm super happy to be conveying these messages to you. So a new way of being, integration. You're integrating your past with your present and you're able to create a different roadmap for your future. I feel like you're doing some resting, some self-analysis in this period, in which case if you're not, you should be doing this. It's the perfect timing to do so. Some of you might have even taken up the practice of praying, yeah? Praying, reconsidering your faith, reworking with it, so that you're bringing in all these beautiful blessings. Trust more, control less, yeah? We also have here the Oracle of Chaldea. <laughs> oh God, the gift of foresight, number 37. Let me read you the in-depth message. Continue on your healing journey with enthusiasm, but without forcing things to happen more quickly than feels natural. Sometimes the body will be ready to let go while the mind is still holding on. At other times, the mind may need to be patient as the body is processing an experience. Trust in your own timing and rhythm. There's no need to be impatient or to judge yourself. You are summoning the spiritual fortitude to tackle an issue which has previously held you back. When the time is right, the healing shall happen more easily than if you try to push forward prematurely. Things are going to work out. Be positive, okay? The answers are coming. The answers are coming. And if you're really honest with yourself, you already knew what these answers were, okay? We also have here external validation. This is what has been blocking you. You have been too reliant on other people's opinions of you. And when other people are no longer around you, then who are you? Maybe this period where Saturn and Aquarius has been forcing a lot of us to be indoors, to focus on our own selves, has been particularly heavy for you because you lost the external validation that you had from other people. But keep in mind that was building a superficial sense of self, one that was very ego-based and one that could have pushed real love, authentic prosperity, away from you okay so we also see here the next card that i have oh the light i keep trying to kind of move it around is um the solar plexus chakra i'm so surprised that the chakras made an appearance today i was waiting for some hindu gods to appear since it's diwali but we see a focus on the chakras and we're gonna go with it so this is the solar plexus chakra you might resonate with group one as well they had some messages there regarding that this is about confidence, creativity, having inner power, a power that comes from I know who I am because I've placed myself in situations in life and I've learned from them. I gathered sufficient life experience, I've educated myself, I made decisions, I might have even made mistakes and I'm learning from them and this is building your strong sense of self. Irrespective of what other people are saying, you know who you are because you took bold and brave risks and some of them paid out, others might have sent you back to the drawing board, but they all build character, yeah? No longer do you need to rely on this external validation, on um, maybe the number of people that support you, right? Your followers or people that um, are just the metric at the end of the day, right? You rely on your own light and that light is the one that creates the abundance, the prosperity that attracts people towards you, right? So always coming back within, always finding your home and your roots deep within yourself, in your body, in your spirit, in your mind. It's absolutely gorgeous energy, wow. And you're also, wow, yeah, <gasps> Ooh, such a sense of expansion, like a stone was lifted off my chest. You've been living with a lot of pressure inside of yourself and that was making you control things, right? So because potentially you grew up in an environment that was filled with chaos, so you were struggling so much to create stability and to hold on to things. But the whole point of that chaotic environment was to help you connect to spirit and to become a creative individual. That was the lesson behind it. Now, look, the message. Nothing has gone wrong. 
you did nothing wrong, okay? And nobody that came into your life and hurt you was actually doing something to destroy you. It was meant for you. It was meant to help you understand yourself from a different perspective. And it was meant to activate you as well. Activate your deep inner strength and your deep inner light. Nothing has gone wrong. You did not miss an opportunity. Whatever is meant for you is coming to you, okay? Have confidence. Have confidence in your manifestations. Have confidence in yourself. As you are learning through love, nothing has gone wrong, yeah? And we have here as well, yes, I, I was looking for a moment. Did I actually read you all the cards? Yes, I did. So we have here as well, carnelian. This is your stone and this is a beautiful grounding energy. So this is a stone that you can wear on your body or around you. When you're feeling a little bit like space cadet style, you know, you're somewhere high up above and um, maybe a lot of things and information is coming at you and you just need to feel like, ooh, center, be more stable, yeah. Because I'm feeling that you guys could go through periods when you're just running out of breath. What are you guys doing? Are you watching this reading on a treadmill? Or um, are you climbing stairs while you're watching this reading? Or maybe you're running while you're listening to me? Because I'm just getting a sense of a person running out of breath often <laughs> in this reading today, okay? So maybe uh, go to the doctor and check your heart as well. Make sure that it's in, in tip-top shape, okay? So just as a side note, you know, I'm like a, in the role of a caring mother right now. <laughs> Carnelian, a cherry red chalcedony used by ancient Romans in signet rings. Wax doesn't stick to it, that's why. And by modern folk to ward off insecurities. Carnelian's fiery energy helps us spin, helps us spin out of our fearful thoughts and into action. Who needs it? The understimulated, anybody looking to get acquainted with their fears. Hello fear, my name is, insert your name. We have some beautiful work to do together. Now, STFU, <laughs> and let's do this, yeah? So that's the inner dialogue that you could benefit from in this period, especially if you suffer from anxiety, okay? I felt two very strong um, anxiety attacks close to my heart center as I was reading your energy. So be mindful, my love, okay? There are ways to cope with it. You don't have to be at the mercy of anxiety all your life, okay? Um, and this is speaking from a person like myself who suffered from deep fear throughout her life. Where to put carnelian? Wherever you want to inject some passion and confidence. You can put it <laughs> on a palette or on your pelvis. And when to use it? When you find your creativity or sex drive on sleep mode, go with your gut. Okay, go with your gut. I choose to learn through love. You don't have to control things because divine order is at play and nothing has gone wrong and if you go with your gut you might find out that as you awaken and transform you are also not only strongly protected by the unconditional love of mother mary that always is around you and mother is you some of you could have a deep mother wound and that's why the anxiety you feel that the world is an unsafe place it's not nurturing and loving but you're learning how to mother yourself and it's a beautiful experience. And keep in mind, you have the gift of foresight. You can share messages of light with people in the world in this period. So we need you. We need you to overcome this anxiety and come out of a persecution mode and understand just how powerful you are. Yeah? And if this is an inquiry about love, go for it. Go for it, okay? This is a wonderful love opportunity. So the sun is beaming straight down. <laughs> I feel that this has been a very beautiful full circle integration because we brought the light in. You can see how strong it is and it's making kind of like these lines on my face. I really hope you have enjoyed this energy. I hope that this is inspiring you and I really hope that you also take part in my giveaway, okay? Help me give you a free reading. See you in my next one. I'm sending you so much light. Bye!